Hi, my name is Gokul Narayan. I'm a lead faculty with the Asian School of Cyber Laws. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about something astounding that has happened in the field of patents uh, just in the past few days in South Africa. Now, the Patent Office in South Africa has granted for the first time in the history of intellectual property a patent to an artificial intelligence. Yes, you heard me right. It's a patent in which the applicant, sorry, the inventor is actually an artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence goes by the name of DABUS, which is, a, uh, which is an acronym. It stands for a device for autonomous bootstrapping of sentience. And it was developed by uh, Stephen Thaler and used by Professor Abbott and his team from the University of Surrey. So the application was made. The application specifically said that uh, the patent is for a food container that improves grip as well as heat transfer. That is all the information that I have about the container or the specific patent that has been granted. But the fascinating part is that the inventor in the patent, like I mentioned earlier, is an artificial intelligence. Now this throws up a lot of questions. It's fascinating, it's mind-boggling, I'm confused, and I wanted to share all of this with you. So let me begin. Uh, first of all, uh, the application has been made in various other countries also, and it has received a very mixed response. Uh, the High Court of England and Wales has already re uh, rejected an application made by Davos. The European Union has rejected it, both on the grounds that um, the they claim that an artificial intelligence is not a legal entity, not a natural person, and therefore cannot claim to be an inventor under the respective laws. Uh, the US Trademark Office has also rejected a claim made by Darbus on very similar grounds. However, the Australian uh, uh, Justice Beach from Australia has actually said that there is nothing in the Australian law that actually prohibits an artificial intelligence from filing an application or being mentioned as an inventor in an application for a patent and therefore this should be permitted. Now, it is fascinating on various accounts. A few of them are as follows. First of all, the manner in which I have been given to understand intellectual property and uh, patent specifically is the, the law has been created with the intent of rewarding the creator by creating a, an artificial monopoly within which she or he can exploit that which they have created. So, for example, if I have created a new drug, uh, for example, to, um, to cure baldness, I'm not saying baldness is a disease, but um, uh, to cure baldness, then I will be given the opportunity among, within the ambit of the law to commercially exploit that which I have created thereby, by creating an artificial monopoly where nobody else will be able to use that formula for the medicine. Here, for a period of time, I will be exclusively allowed to sell my medicine or my drug, after which it will become public knowledge and other people will also be able to exploit that scientific development that I have come up with. First of all, that. Secondly, uh, the system of intellectual property rewards the creator or the manufacturer or any uh, any form of intellectual property it may be with recognition. It recognizes the work done by the artist or the scientific invention made by the scientist and acknowledges their, um, their contribution to the field. The question that I have in my mind is, how do these basic tenets with which intellectual property was initially created address the needs of an AI. And here, because I'm stumbled, because I'm foxed, I think the solution would be to look at AI like an application made by a corporate entity, at least for now. Since we don't have AIs which have um, uh, gained consciousness as of yet, um, uh, like the doomsday scenario that was posted or painted in um, movie sci-fi movies like um, The Terminator, where uh, the artificial intelligence gains consciousness and therefore tries to take all decisions on its own uh, and is able to um, expand the algorithm which has been created by humans itself. Uh, considering those doomsday scenarios aside, uh, 
till the time something like that happens, AIs could be treated, in my humble opinion, the same way as corporates can be treated. Uh, but this is up for debate and I'd like to hear your opinion on whether this would be possible. But, uh, but before I leave, I'd just like to highlight certain provisions under the Indian Patent Act and um, throw it open for debate whether this kind of an application could or would ever be accepted in India. Now, if we look at um, Form 1 of the Patents Act, there are two categories that are relevant to this uh, consideration. One is uh, application category 3B, which is the category of applicant wherein the applicant can be either a natural person or other than a natural person, it can be a small entity, a startup or other. That's the category that's mentioned, other. Now, according to me, that other category has a lot of scope for interpretation. Um, it can be uh, interpreted extremely broadly. Now, coupled with this is the next part of the patent application form, which says inventors. Now, over here, if the person who's the inventor is the same as the applicant, all you need to do is all the uh, tick on the option which says all the inventors are the same as the applicants named above. Or you need to fill in the details of the applicant or the inventor. Now here also I believe that there is a lot of scope for um, allowing non-entities and therefore AIs to be inventors as well. If we look at the Patent Act and the definitions under the Patent Act, there is no definition which has been provided of the word inventor. On the other hand, we do have a definition which has been given to the word Patentee. That means the person filing the applicant as the person who has created the scientific invention, the patentee. Over here, all it mentions is a patentee can be any person and then it goes on to uh, define it. L let me actually go ahead and read it out, read out the exact definition for you. Uh, a patentee means the person for the time being entered on the register as the grantee or proprietor of a patent. So any person who's been granted the patent can be the patentee. But it says the person and then in the subsequent um, definition it says person includes the government. It says includes the government. It does not say what it excludes. It also does not say anywhere that a non-entity like an artificial intelligence cannot be granted a patent. Now this read with section 6 of the Patent Act, persons entitled to apply for patent should create the set of rules and regulations under which this kind of a possibility can be explored in India. Such an application has not been made in India, but if it were to be made, it would be fascinating to see if it would be granted. The more important question that plagues me is what would be the intention or the incentive to grant a patent to an AI? It cannot be monetary. It cannot be recognition. And if not so, what is it? Should we treat it as, as uh, should we treat the AI as a separate entity in itself or should we look at it as an extension of the word of corporate entity or a non-natural person in that regard? Please let me know what you think about it. We will have some experts on board to discuss this in more detail very soon. So please let me know what you think. It's a fascinating question. I'm very intrigued by it. I hope you are too. Thank you so much for listening.